Okay, so last year, yeah, we downloaded it. It made just a tick over a thousand, like a thousand forty-two ish, uh, like forty-six, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. but if you remember when we did that, we did not reach the limit of the engine. We right. reached the limit of the fuel, fuel system yep. in the dyno. Yeah. Right. So, so we two fuel pumps in. Came back, added a second fuel pump, second regulator. You know, there was a whole bunch of er you know errors in there that we had to fix along the way. We started with the fuel pump. We found out the regulator was a problem, so right. we put a second regulator. The guys at Holly sent us a bunch yep. of great stuff. Uh, and that kind of fixed the fuel pressure problem. We haven't had any more fuel delivery issues since then. But the next limit was RPM. So then we thought, yeah, we are running out of RPM because the valves are floating. So we did right. all this work to fix the valve train. And yep. we've done a great job at that. We can yep. now go as high as you want to go. In fact, we can go higher than where the engine makes power naturally aspirated. Right. So what, uh, what I was thinking was maybe we could put the supercharger on there and that would fix some of that issue. Right. And it seems to have. It, it's moved us up several hundred RPM. Yep. But I think at some point you run into an issue where the engine's friction is coming up faster than you can overcome it with airflow. Right. With, so with the combustion analysis, we can actually know what the real, the indicated mean effective pressure is. That's we right. We can back that out, and yep. it's costing us over 300 horsepower That's right. to turn the blower. Yep. So how we did that is we looked at the uh, power and torque in the cylinder and compared yep. that to the dyno when it was naturally aspirated. Right. And I think that was around 65 horsepower, somewhere yep. in that nature. Then when we did the the test with the blower, mm -hmm. we could see the total power in the cylinder and the total power in the dyno and subtract that number. Right. And then subtract out the original 65 that we know is what the engine is right. and the rest. It was, it was a little over 300 horsepower just to turn the supercharger. Yeah. Like, that means you got to have... A you lot know, of taxes. <laughs> yeah, you got to have 15, 16, 1700 horsepower worth of fuel system to right. feed the inside of your engine right. so that, you know, on the outside, it's only making whatever, 12, 1300 you're gonna make. So. Yeah, so one of the runs we made earlier, it was like about 1600 something horsepower. About 1650 in the yeah, cylinder. In the yeah. cylinder. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. If only there was a way to get all that back. I know, <laughs> <laughs> it makes the dyno look a lot better right now. So here's where we're at. Because of the in-cylinder pressure, we're seeing what is telling us what it wants. Yep. And we're about to go into uncharted territory. I, I'll be honest, the last four or five dyno pulls are uncharted territory. <laughs> we, are, we are now doing things with the calibration that I personally have never done. Yep. Mainly because, I'll be honest, you're just too scared, right? Like we can read spark plugs, we can make runs on a dyno, but you're always wondering how close to the edge am I? Right. Now that we have the combustion indication, we can see that we were still really soft. And so right. we've been like slowly inching up chasing this tune-up going, are you sure? I mean, it says it needs it. And right. every time we did it, the engine got better. Right. It was, it's, it's amazing. And right. so here Started we are. Started off around 1,100 horsepower, uh -huh. and there's a, been a couple of runs of right there at 1,300 Yeah, now. we're making a little bit over 1,300. But yeah. the crazy part is, like, when we were naturally aspirated, we're only two or three degrees less now at 20-something pounds of boost than we were <laughs> in A. It's nuts. I would have never thought that was going to be the way. I mean, the old traditional rule of thumb is, well, a half a degree per pound of boost. So you figure, you know, let's just say you got 31 degrees mm -hmm. at NA and you got 22 pounds of boost. So 22 divided in half, you need to take 11, 11 degrees away. Yeah. So, you know, your 31 would become 20. Well, this thing was an absolute dog right. at 20 degrees. Yeah. And we've just been sneaking up, sneaking up, and we're all the way back up now to, I think, about 30 degrees or so. We're, we're going to try on this run. Right. And, uh... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's why we're filming it now. <laughs> Just in case. Just this in might case. be the last run this engine ever makes. Right, right so we'll see. I, I think it'll be okay. The software, the spark plugs, and the dyno all indicate that it's a little bit soft. So I don't know. Maybe it will do nothing. Maybe it'll be worse. Maybe it'll be better. But there's only one way to find out. It's fired up. Okay, let's do it. What an amazing week. Mind blown every which way. I wish I could share everything with you guys that we learned and did this week, but it's... I mean, so much of this Project Lake has been about trying to accomplish the goals, right? We need mm -hmm. to test this, we need to do this, but what would happen is every time we would test something, it was like a rabbit hole, and we'd go oh, yeah. down and start oh. chasing something. We learned so many things you didn't know that you didn't know before. Uh, yeah, I mean, we learned an incredible amount this week, yes. and to get to share it with these guys, I think is 
just icing on the cake. Right. You know what I mean? So let's recap a little bit. Let's talk about the engine and the power and stuff. So right. we know from last year, we yep. started out with the combination that was naturally aspirated mm -hmm. and we ran on the dyno. We ended up making about 657 horsepower. Now that was good power. We weren't like blown away. Like this is the craziest, best engine in the world, but it's pretty good power. Right. But we knew if we put some boost to it, it should get better. Now, how much RPM did we turn in a last year? Okay. So here's the thing. It was basically done at about 7,400 or so, okay. 7,450 right in there and after that it was just going downhill now that's just a function of the engine's volumetric efficiency starting to go away yeah. and the engine friction going up right? right so the same time you need more power you're running out of it yep now the cool thing about a blower though especially one that's crank driven like this like this pro charger is that as the engine's volumetric efficiency starts to go down the blower is still trying to put air out so the boost is going up which is increasing the density of the air more than we're losing in volumetric efficiency. And so therefore the net power gain is pretty significant. So it makes up for it. Yeah, so right away, even with low boost, we made over a thousand, I think a thousand and forty six horsepower last year. But unfortunately, my little dyno cell ran out of fuel pump, yeah. right? But you gotta have air and fuel to make it. You gotta work. have both. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, cool, this is an opportunity to, to take a step two kind of thing and we went and got an identical pump and we started to run that and it was like, huh, it's a little better, but it's not way better. Right. Then we realized what was restricting us was the regulator. Right. So right. the boys over at Holly sent us some, some nice stuff and we got it all set up. That took care of the fuel flow problem. Pretty much we haven't had issue since then. Right. We were able to then raise the boost. But before we talk about what happened then, I want to point out that if you look at the graph, we went from uh, 657 at 7,400 yeah. to we didn't make peak power until about 7,900 or 7,950. Right. Now here's the thing. I always suspected, and we talked about this, that it probably could make more if we kept going up we could get more RPM, we could make more power. Simply because we'd get a little more boost and, you know, it's more power pulses. Right. The problem was the valves were floating. Yeah, 8100 full valve float, which we saw in the Spintron video. Yeah, so we, we took it apart, we put it on the Spintron, it's like, yep, it absolutely is. So then we fixed that, we addressed that problem by going to the comp BSR rocker system. Right which lowered that moment of inertia. We used that three-piece really stiff push rod, and man, what a difference that made. 9,200 RPM and still like a sewing machine. It was crazy. I don't know that it won't go higher than that. We just didn't need to because it was so far past right, the power. It was way dead on power by that point. So of course this week it was like, well, let's turn the boost up. up right, let's right? go. Yeah. And we did that. So um, I'll tell you what was really wild. We started with what I thought were moderately conservative numbers, not like down in the ditch conservative, just uh, this should be pretty close and we weren't anywhere close. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that we had the in-cylinder combustion analysis right. and being able to indicate, you know, mean effective pressure. And know what's happening in the cylinder. I honestly would have probably left a lot of meat on the bone. I would have left a lot on the table simply because, you know, you, you tend to tune on the dyno to whatever your weakest cylinder is and you kind of compromise, but being able to go through and nitpick every cylinder individually and have the software tell us, you're still conservative, you're still conservative. And of course, we were looking at spark plugs right. going, well, oh, spark yeah. plug says it's okay. You know, you got the dyno saying it looks a little soft. You got your spark plug saying they look a little soft. And you got some super fancy software. And, and it was kind of like, well, if we're not going to listen to the data, then why bother? Right. So as we started to chase it conservatively and conservatively, man, it just kept going up and up. So we ended up making 1,327 horsepower. Right. But here's the cool part. At 8,500 RPM. Yeah. yeah. We picked up a thousand RPM from the naturally aspirated, right? Yep. And nearly a thousand RPM from, from the previous boost. We never even changed valve springs. <laughs> right, exactly. We didn't change the camshaft. We didn't nope. change the valve springs. Nope. All we did was optimize the valve train stiffness, moment of inertia, and push rods, you know. And we gained a ton of performance from this engine. Oh, that it was pretty cool. Well, it was stunning to see what it would do. I mean, we made 13 runs today over a thousand horsepower and every one of those over 9100 rpm yeah now we That's made more than 13 crazy. runs today we right. made more than 13 runs today but 13 of them were over a thousand horsepower and over 9100 rpm i don't even remember the last time we checked the valve lash that was two or three days ago right it's that is impressive yeah which that was kind of the, what we wanted to build the engine for was have something that wasn't just a one run dyno hero 
it was something that you could, we could make these kind of runs. You could do this kind of tuning. And it's crazy to think we actually accomplished that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But there's so much more. I mean, we, we there's so much more left here. It's not even <laughs> close, which sounds ridiculous. You, to pick up 300 horsepower, and you're like, you're not even close yet? No, like, no, no. The thing is, yet. like, we the only thing we ran out of today was time. Like, right. we've got three or four different kinds of fuels we want to test. We haven't tested dry sump stuff yet. We right. haven't tested humidity yet. We haven't tested, you know, we want to go back and just keep going going and pushing more and right. more and more, but man, we ran out of time. But luckily, within the time we had, we accomplished all of our goals and yep. so much more. What about the frictional losses? You want to talk to these guys about friction? Yeah, oh yeah. So within cylinder combustion, we can see how much power the actually engine's making Yeah. versus when the dyno will tell you how much made it out. That's right. So, so you the, can see the frictional losses. The dyno is like after taxes. That's what you right. take exactly. home in your paycheck. One's right? gross and one's net. There you go. That's ex exactly what it is. So we found out that when we were running the engine naturally aspirated, mm -hmm. There was about 65 horsepower or so that we were losing in there, right. somewhere in that neighborhood, right? But now that we're up here at 1,300 horsepower, it's something like 325 or yeah. 330 that we're losing. So right. that still 65 of that is just the engine friction. All the rest is the power it's taking to turn right. the supercharger. I think we netted it out. It was 313 yeah. yet, I believe it yep. was, on, on one of the runs we looked at. You know, comparisons like 313 horsepower in taxes. Yeah, so think about this, like that last run that we just made, it made 1,680 horsepower in the cylinders. 1,680. So wouldn't it be great to have all that available at the crankshaft? Wait, wait, wait one second. That, by the way, is with a one millimeter, one millimeter, <laughs> two millimeter ring set. Please tell me you don't need a 16th, 16th, 316th ring set anymore if you're gonna make big power. That's uh, 1,600 horsepower on a 112. 1680. That's 1680. 1700. That's closer to 1700. Gapless, right? gas ported. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Like everything about this engine, where we're at right now, is like, wow. And look, you know, making 1300 horsepower, 1325, that's a great number. It's not like, you know, set the world on fire or anything like right. that. But it was never meant to be, right? Like, no. we, we have so much more that we can explore and do on Everything this other than the connecting rods in this engine because of the odd deck height yeah. is a part numbered shelf you can just product. swipe your credit card and get it right there's nothing customer special other than the connecting rods and that yeah. was just because of the deck height yeah that's pretty cool man so yeah. i'm so excited for next year and yes. all the things that we can do and work on and try to optimize that now we have these tools we just need to dig back in and get after it yeah exactly well let's talk about it at the round table can't wait see you guys there what a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.